Hello everyone, I'm your host, Metal Horror Gamer, and I'm with... Hi guys, it's me, Mother Mischief. And we are talking about God of War for the PS4 right now, and we're going to discuss the game. So this is this will be considered my review of this title. I plan to do it so many different ways, and it's just not coming out right, and this game has been giving me headaches <laughs> for a game I don't even really care, <laughs> care for. It's been killing me this, uh-huh. these weeks. I'm tired of this game. I want to get this out and be done with it, and never play it again, never talk about it again. I'm done with this game, but I gotta get this review out, so that's what we're going to do. Now, before I start, I do want to mention that this is my channel. I run it how I want it to run it, and I'm letting you know right now, if you... If you are going to go into the comments and try to get personal over an opinion on a game, I'm, I will ignore you. I will delete your comments. I won't respond. So don't do it. Don't even bother typing because it will be up there for like a few seconds and it'll be gone. If you don't have to agree with me, I do not expect you to agree to agree with me. If you disagree and you're mature and civil, that's fine. We can talk. You can talk with other people. That's fine. I don't care. But the moment you start trying to be personal or call people, call people names or call myself a name, that's when I don't care about you. Your opinion means shit to me. And I will just delete your comment and not talk to you. Because I do not have time to deal with trolls and assholes. So, yeah. Gonna act childish. Just don't even bother. Just leave that for yourself. Do it on your own time. So on that note, let me ask you real quick. How do you feel about this God of War game? Because you're a big god of war fan you've been you've been playing them <laughs> since the original how do you feel about this one i feel as though this game personally was a complete letdown uh-huh. that's my opinion i know a lot of other people are gonna get pissed with that opinion but it's just an opinion well i agree with your opinion well i don't flat out technically hate the game no i don't hate it i do think this is a huge disappointment yeah. For God of War fans like myself and you who wanted something more. And we're going to get into that in a bit. But yeah, for me, it was a huge disappointment. And it will be on my biggest disappointments of 2018. If I have a list for it, it's definitely on there right now. <laughs> yeah. This game is disappointing. And not to say that it's everything is bad, that everything's flat out bad. It's just that it's not what we wanted. You it's know? not what I expected from a game that had so much time. Could have been better. That's all I gotta say. Okay, so before we get into the story, I want to go over a brief overview of our cast of characters for the game. Because once I go over them and tell you what the story is about, you're going to see what the fuck were they thinking when they made this game. <laughs> <laughs> so first we have Kratos. We know who Kratos is. He's a Greek god. He technically is the, the god of war in Greek mythology now. And... He traveled to the Norse mythology. How and why, we don't know. How did he get there? I have no idea. It never says. Second, our second main member we have here, we have Atreus, his son. Um, he's a very sickly child for a stupid reason, which makes no sense at all, but he's sick, apparently. And after that, we have Faye, his mom, who we never see because she died before the game starts. So she's dead. We have Baldur. Who is a god. He has a spell placed on him where he is immortal. He can't feel pain, but he also can't feel pleasure. We also have Freya, is Baldur's mom. She is married to Odin. She is the queen of the Valkyries. They kind of see her as a witch until they find out she's a god. She placed a spell on Baldur to keep him safe. And he obviously hates it. And she was banished to live the rest of her days on Midgard. Because Odin's a dick, apparently. Um, Odin's kind of mentioned a lot, but you never see Odin. He's just mentioned. We also have Brock and Sindri, who are two dwarfs. And their main job in this game is to upgrade your armor, upgrade your weapons. And that's basically it. We also have the World Serpent, who does nothing in the game and is just there for the trailer. Because there's no use in the game at all. At least not for this one. Uh, we have, and I'm sorry if I p- mispronounce these names, Modai and Magni, which are Thor's sons. They're basically Baldur's henchmen, and Baldur is their uncle. And they're here because of reasons. And last, we have Mimir, who is has to be the best character in this game. 
And I'm saying the best. I'm meaning he's better than Kratos and Atreus, which is pretty sad. But he mm-hmm. is better than both of them. And there's some other characters there on the side who don't really matter to this game. Um, you have uh, Thaumir, or Thaumir, whatever you pronounce it. He's a big giant. Comes out in the last scene of the game. Doesn't really matter. You have Thor, who comes out in a secret ending. And this game, he doesn't really matter. And you got the Valkyries, who you can meet in the throughout the world and kill them. And again, to the story, they don't really matter. <laughs> so, now that you know our characters, let me explain to you the next epic, great story in the God of War franchise. <laughs> <laughs> so, what did Santa Monica slave over all these years? What's the next epic story that's going to take us through the Norse mythology, introduce us to Norse gods and monsters, and have us fight a bunch of ferocious creatures and mean gods just kick ass what do we get as the story we get a story about kratos taking his son on a journey to spread his mom's ashes on the highest peak in all the nine realms and that's the story that's what we got for this god of war that's it everything else that happens every character you meet all incidental and all just really there to lead up to the next game. This story is basically a prelude to the next one. Now you can argue that the real story is to show the relationship between Kratos and Atreus. But they are so unlikable and their interactions so forced. It's not enjoyable. It's really painful to watch going through this game they are trying to be the next joe and ellie and they fail at every possible moment yeah Yeah, they're not likable whatsoever it's like dear lord and that's probably because mainly one probably acting two scripts and three the build-up of those characters but i don't want to really talk about the last of us other than this game is trying really hard to be the last of us and it just it fails (laughs) So, obviously, I probably already pissed off some fans who love this game and say, that's not what the story is about. Yes, it is. That's not disputed. That is what the main plot is. Now, there are other characters and other stuff happens, but none of it really is aimed at Kratos and Atreus to stop their mission of spreading some ashes. So, that's why none of the game really matters. And the secondary plot that's hidden within the game it's meant to lead up to the sequel, which for me personally, that's not how you should focus on a movie or a game or any kind of subject. If you're not focusing on the game at hand and looking towards the sequel already, that's a problem. Okay, so far, just hearing that story synopsis, what do you think of it? Oh my god. Just the story alone is a huge letdown compared to stories that we've heard before in previous God of War It's like, that's what they came up with all these years? Yeah, and that's... Spreading ashes. And going through this game, and of course we're going to cover more uh, in a bit, comparing this alone, just as one aspect, and all this time that they had, and, you know, all this experience what they had with the Greek mythology and everything else, and making such great games before... And of course, I know there's people that either haven't played it or still talking the way they want to about, you know, the other games before, like saying they sucked or whatever. Okay, your opinion. But to people who have played these games before and got their money's worth from it and everything else as a game, to me, this one is just a complete letdown. Well, I know people are saying there's a lot more that goes on, but none of it really matters with the main story. But we'll go into more detail on that right now. Um... So yeah, I made a big claim earlier about saying that this story was just about spreading some ashes, and that's pretty much all that happens. Um, I'm not lying, that that really is the main story. Now there are some other parts of the game that are supposed to fill in the gaps of the story, but they have nothing to do with that main plot point, and we're going to discuss that right now. Okay, so let's go, let's go over this story and try to keep it as fast as possible. Faye's dead. And her final wish was for her ashes to be spread on the highest peak in all the realms. Which we find out later on is in Jotunheim, the realm of the giants. Well, Kratos decides he doesn't want to do it right now because Atreus is a sick little child and he doesn't know why he's sick. He's just sick. 
So he decides we're not going to do that. But Boulder comes along and he knocks on his door and then asks. He pretty much keeps telling Kratos he wants an answer for a question he never asks. And they get into a fight. And we learn that Baldur is, you know, a god. And he's constantly complaining about how he can't feel anything. Because he has a, a spell on him by his mom. He can't feel nothing. So, but we still fight him. We kill him. We're done with. So now Kratos knows it's time to move on. We need to do this journey now because it's no longer safe here. And they go on their journey. They meet characters like the World Serpent who kind of helps them learn how to go through the different realms. Mimir does the same thing for them. They meet Brock and Sindri who upgrades their armor and weapons. Oh, and they meet Freya who helps them for most of the game until the end. And they also meet Moldai and Magni Mm -hmm. who are Thor's son who are... They're, they're henchmen for Baldur, and they're pretty much trying to help Baldur attack us. And that's pretty much what happens in between. But let me tell you what doesn't make sense about this game. Now, as I mentioned earlier, Baldur attacks Kratos. And he's just asking him for an answer to a question he doesn't ask. Now, but the problem is here that we find out the story is actually about Odin sent Baldur to go kill Faye. Because somehow killing Faye was going to prevent Ragnarok from happening. Um, the issue is Faye's already dead. Now Baldur doesn't know this at the beginning of the game. But later on he ends up tracking Kratos and Atreus by using Faye's ashes. Now at this point it's we can clearly see that he knows Faye is dead. So I'm going to ask you. Why is he still following Kratos and Atreus if his whole mission was to kill Faye and now he knows Faye's dead. There's no point for him to be doing that shit. So he's just doing it to because they need a boss fight? (laughs) That's what I figure. I mean, if this is the story they try to weave he's attacking them because he's an idiot. He has no real reason to to attack Kratos. He just wants to fight just to fight. And it's like, maybe he thinks Kratos has a solution to make him feel something, but I don't know why he would even think that, because there's no reason to. But his whole mission was to kill Faye, which is why he even has um, Moldi and Moldi, Moldi and Magni, or Magni, I hate their, I hate their names, whatever their, their <laughs> names are called, Thor's sons. There's a reason why he has them to go attack Kratos also, but it's like, why? Faye is dead. Mission accomplished. Go home. Relax. Why are you still attacking him? Because their goal is not to stop Kratos and Atreus getting to the mountain to spread ashes. That's not their goal. Their goal was to kill Faye. She's dead. They know she's dead. Move on. This this is this is the secondary plot that we're supposed to... Woo! Great story. She's dead. Why should we care? Why is he attacking? There's no reason for it. Do you see a reason? No. Now, from what we learned from Baldur, as we said, he has a spell on him. The one who put the spell on him was Freya. She put it on him to protect her son, so he, I guess, could not be killed. Um, There's one flaw with it, that he's weak against Mistletoe. If anything against Mistletoe hits him or something, he goes back to normal, I guess? I don't know. It's... Can't have him at a Christmas party. Yeah, that's that's lame. But that's part of the real Norse mythology, so I, I don't care that's well, in that's, there. Well, that's, yeah. It's fine. Know. But it's, it, may, it just makes Baldur even lame or character. But, so what happens that one of the dwarves, I can't remember which one, they gave Atreus a, a pack of arrows that were made with mistletoe. Uh, Freya sees it eventually, and she tells them they shouldn't have this because it's, it's bad, it's dangerous, and she burns them. But she didn't know that Kratos used the part of one of those arrows to fix um, Atreus' uh, quiver. And the problem is, later on, at the end of the game, he tries to punch Atreus, and he punches that mistletoe arrow, and it takes away the spell. So now he's happy he can feel. He's happy he can, you know, I can feel pain or pleasure, but then we kill him real quickly. So maybe you shouldn't have removed that spell, because it's the only thing keeping your stupid ass alive. <laughs> and he died real quick after... That part, because you have. What I want to know is who the hell punches a kid, (laughs) or attempts to punch a kid. He's an asshole. (laughs) So, but the whole time Freya's your friend until that moment, and she's like, "Stop it, don't kill him." And even though he tries to kill her, and she's like, "Let him do it." And then 
Kratos tries to stop him, and she gets mad at Kratos because he's trying to keep her alive, and she's an idiot. Everyone in this game's an idiot, pretty much. That, that's the theme of this God of War. Everyone's an idiot. They have they have no reason to do what, what they're doing. They're just all being stupid. Okay, before we get to the main important part of the game, which is the gameplay for me, I want to talk about one more aspect, and it's the relationship between Kratos and Atreus. I personally feel this game failed at this attempt to do a fatherly son bond and show us a journey between a father and son and growing together. Because they're two characters, they just don't mix correctly. They, it doesn't feel right. And we've seen Kratos be a loving father before. We saw him with Calliope and, and Chains of Olympus when he gives up his powers to be with her, but then he quickly learns he can't stay with her and he has to get his powers back and he has to force her off of him and he has to be forced to leave her again and it's painful for him it's tragic for him to do that but he has to do it and this game they try to make you feel like oh he's a, a father and a son they're getting closer and but they never get there for me it's like i don't know there's one part that seems kind of stupid like kratos he goes into this light and all of a sudden, he sees, like, Faye and all this other shit. And then, like, Atreus pulls him out. And he sees, like, a bunch of dead bodies everywhere. And, and, and I don't, it, doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't even explain how long he was in there. And Atreus, after that part of the game, Atreus becomes an even bigger dick the rest of the game. He's all like, you left me. Hey, he told you he was going to go in there for a while and get whatever he had to get. And you pull him out before he can find out what he wants to find out. And you're being a dick about it. And it's like... Oh, I, at that point, I really hated Atreus. He wouldn't shut up. He was yeah. he was being a spoiled brat the whole time. He didn't become somewhat tolerable until the moment Kratos tells him, Hey, you're a god. This is why you're sick. And now that you know, you, you won't be sick no more, pretty much. But he becomes an even worse character because he becomes cocky. He starts to treat Brock and Sindri like they're nothing, like they're low lives. They're beneath him. And then he kills one of Thor's sons. And he's like, we can do what we want. We're gods. And blah, 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 blah. And he's like, he becomes even more annoying after he learns that. And he never really recovers. And he kind of calms down near the end. But he's such a badly written character throughout the whole game. He's not good. And, spoiler warning, you, we do find out at the end he is Loki. And maybe that's why he's supposed to be a little shithead of a character. Because he is Loki, but he is so not likable in this game. None. I could not stand him the entire game. I get what they're trying to do with the whole, you know, relationship between Kratos and Atreus. I get that relationship. I get what they were going for. I get how they were trying to develop it. Well, how they created and trying to develop these characters. So you could become, you know, connected with them in some form, some way. But but the execution of it was extremely poor. Like how you said Atreus was just a plain asshole after he found out, you know, who and what he was. And of course, you know, that's probably pointing towards, you know, that the fact he was supposed to be Loki. Or that he is Loki. And it should have been done better. It could have been done better, but it was not done. And to... To anybody think that thinks that that was better, okay, that's, you know, your opinion on that. But to me, it was just poorly done. The whole, you know, dialogue between Kratos and Atreus just felt really hollow. It felt really boring. It was bland. There was nothing to it. And how you said his interaction with his daughter Calliope was a lot more, you know, devastating in a sense because of what he had to do. And it's kind of sad that one little interaction you could feel more between the characters than you could an entire game between two other characters. And that's where the downfall is, is that if somebody could before create a scene and you feel so much for, for it and feel so bad for both these characters and then you go through a whole game with two other characters and not feel any of that, something went wrong. Yeah, I felt bad for Kratos with Calliope and with, with Atreus, 
they just don't connect. You just, it's, it's not, it's like completely total opposites that will never click. And they're supposed to because it's father and son. But I think you felt more a connection, more of a bond between him and his daughter than you ever felt between him and Atreus. The whole thing feels like a chore. That's what it, it does. feels like. And it seems like even Kratos feels like this whole thing is a chore. And, I mean, some of the expressions he has during and, out the you know, during, and during out the whether game, you like, like that. The, whether you like the characters and how they interact like, is a whole different thing. That's your opinion. Some, yeah. people, some people are going to enjoy it. I personally did not because I just don't buy it. It just doesn't seem authentic. Yeah. And it just feels forced. And because we're supposed to automatically feel for these characters to be together and try to care about their journey. But it's like their journey is such... It's not uh, even an important journey. Let's spread some ashes. It, there's no real depth in it. There's no real reason to get it done other than it was her final wish. So there's no reason for it. So I don't care about their struggles together. And they, and I said, Atreus is a little unlikable piece of shit for most of the game. So yeah. it's like... Uh, he's not it's it's hard to like him if he's not likable yeah. i mean he's trying to be like i mentioned ellie from the last of us but ellie was likable from the very beginning sure she had her little rough edges but that's because she's an outcast she has the virus in her and she doesn't know what's what why how come she hasn't changed but she's a likable character and yeah. joel's interaction with her is likable because we saw what happened to his daughter and he doesn't want to get close to her because he doesn't want to have that happen again yeah. but, but their journey he Starts to see her as a daughter, and then at the he very becomes protective at the her. very end when it says we have to kill her to save everyone else, he chooses fuck that. I'm keeping her alive. He chooses her life and, over everybody and else's. It makes sense because we saw what he went through with Kratos and Atreus. There's none of that. It's like yeah. it feels hollow. It's like you get what they're going for, but their execution and the way they went about it, somewhere around there, it just went completely complete crap. It just went to complete and see, crap. And this is the problem for more most people. If the main plot of spraying ashes doesn't get you, then the character interaction, their journey is supposed to get you interested in it. Yeah. But it's, for me, it was not interesting. So the whole story, everything feels flat because everything is aimed towards the sequel. Everything that happens to Kratos and Atreus is incidental and never aimed at them to stop what they're doing. And Atreus is just not a likable character. Kratos is a bland character here with no personality other than... I'm moping you know he's yeah. he's such a boring character now and like every five minutes he's saying boy boy and, yeah you know it's just and then plus now he's hulk hogan when he just hulks out and he now he finds a yeah, way to stop. I'm just like, what the, hell? The, the whole story falls flat but luckily for me okay and for those who are saying i'm way off but how can this not be a good story i want to tell you the story of the original title because the original title is the way you start off a franchise. This one, if this wasn't called God of War, this franchise could be dead in the water already. But since it has the name God of War, that's why it's there. But the original story, the very beginning, we see that there's a man who is who's the leader of his Spartan army. He's about to finally fail in a battle. He's about to be killed. But instead of dying, he calls to Ares and tells him if he spares his men and vows and gives him the power to defeat all his enemies, he vows to be his servant, pretty much. And Ares agrees, and Kratos kills the guy, and of course Ares bonds the Blades of Chaos to Kratos to pretty much make it permanent. So he serves Ares because he vowed to do so. Ares feels Kratos has the potential to become the greatest warrior, but he can't do it because he feels he's held back by his wife and child. So. When Ares tells Kratos to go destroy a city, he places Kratos' wife and child there, and Kratos accidentally kills them. And this is a terrible thing for Kratos. He was not trying to do this. He did it. And an oracle who lived in that town put a curse on Kratos, saying that he shall always be reminded, or he shall always remember this act, and he shall always have to live through it in his head again and again and again. So this act tortures him and haunts him and for the final nail in the coffin she takes their ashes and puts it on his skin which is why he becomes all white which is why he's known as the ghost of sparta and because of that he pretty much breaks his vow to Ares, and he tells the other gods that he will serve them if they promise to get rid of the nightmares to remove this curse and they tell him okay sure 
If as long as you serve us, we'll, we'll help you. So ten years later, he's still serving them, and nothing yet. And he he's fed up. He feels he's been dragged along this whole time. He calls Athena. And he says, "I want this thing removed now. I'm tired. It's been ten years. I've been serving you. When are you going to remove the curse?" And they tell him, "Well, we can do that." Once you do one more task for us, and that's to kill Ares, because he's attacking the city of Athens. So Kratos goes on a mission to do that. But he quickly learns he can't kill a god just because he wants to kill a god. He ha he needs to open Pandora's box to get the power to kill a god. But the problem is Pandora's box is on top of Kronos, the Titan, and he's in the Desert of Lost Souls. So Kratos has to journey all the way over there. He climbs up Kronos for three days. And finally, when he pulls out Pandora's box, Ares kills Kratos. He ends up in the underworld. Kratos has to fight his way out of the underworld, escape, get back on top of that on Kronos when he wakes up, open Pandora's box, and now he can go fight Ares. He goes to fight Ares. He used the blades of the gods to kill Ares, and his task is complete. He did it. But the gods tell him, you are forgiven of your sins but we cannot remove the, the nightmares. So pretty much they used them for 10 years, letting them, letting him think they could remove it. They, they did not, showing that the gods were a bunch of assholes and he's finally fed up with life. He decides, it's I can't live with it no more. It's too much. So he tries to kill himself by throwing himself off a cliff into the Aegean Sea. But uh, Athena saves him at the last moment, takes him to Olympus, and makes him the new god of war. For his, It's a reward for his service for 10 years. And that's where the game ends. But if you look at the original god of war, we have a character who, you know, who gave away his life just to, because he's blood hungry, kind of. But then he, it comes with a terrible price. He kills his wife and child. And then he's cursed to remember it. And he has, as a worst reminder, their ashes are on his skin, which is a terrible thing to go through. So he's, of course, he's sad. He killed his kid. He feels remorseful. He's also angry because he was betrayed by Ares. Then he tries to help the other gods and serve them. But he's even more pissed because they keep using him, dragging him along, him as a puppet, and he's not getting nowhere. And finally, when he does complete their task, they lie to him the whole time. They said, you're forgiven. But we can't remove the nightmares. And the whole series, he's basically lied to and betrayed by everyone he puts any trust in. He was betrayed by Ares in the first game. He's betrayed by the gods in all the games. He's betrayed by the Titans. And even the one person he thinks is a friend, Athena, she betrays him at the end of the series as well. Everyone betrays him. But, so if you, under, if you think he's just angry, well, he's got a pretty damn good reason to be angry. But in all the games, he shows other sides. Like I said, he loves his daughter. He shows that in Chains of Olympus. And Ghost of Sparta, he shows that he also cares about his brother as well. But these people who talk shit about these games don't know that because they, don't, they didn't play them. So they think Kratos was just an angry guy, which is not the case. He is a lot more, he had a lot more depth in that whole series that he does in this one game. He has no depth in this game. Whether you agree with or not, you don't have to agree. And when we compare the stories of part one to this one, what I just explained, mm -hmm. compared to spreading some ashes. It's it, a major downfall. It, it doesn't compare. It's yeah. like, this was the epic story that you made for the next God of War. I, I We've had plenty of talks about what they could do with the next God of War game. And what they should go to. And everyone kind of seemed to agree with Norse mythology. Because everybody wanted to see Kratos versus Thor and stuff like that. But I don't think anyone ever said when they thought about it. We should have a game where Kratos spreads his wife's ashes. Yeah, that's a good story. <laughs> that, that's a great story for Norse mythology, right? No. that's What the fuck? I mean, what were they thinking? Yeah. But luckily for me, story is not the most important aspect of a game. No. And can you believe I was told... That I was closed-minded because I thought story didn't matter in a game. <laughs> it's a video game. Can you tell me? I'm a quiz moment. What's the most important part of a video game? 
gameplay. Exactly. It's not the story. Story is icing on the cake, just like everything else. I'm sorry, but I have to agree with what one of the guys said at Bungie when... And this was years ago when they were doing one of the other games. Halo, Halo 3. Yeah, Halo 3 is that... And I, it's 100% true. A game has to be fun before it is pretty. Because if you try to do it the other way around, you're going to end up with a lot of other games that are just complete crap. Well, I've always said you can have a great game with a shitty story, but fun gameplay. And the game can be a fun game. But if you have a game with an amazing story and shitty gameplay... Then the game's not worth playing because the game is not fun. It's boring. Some people like those more slower games with no action, no gameplay. For me, it's me growing up playing games that were just all gameplay. Yeah, that's how that's my experience with games. And games should always be about gameplay. Gameplay is king. And when you try to say it's not, and try to say story is more important than a game, all I can say is. Go watch a movie. Go watch. Go read a read book. A book. Yeah. Go read a comic book. Read something that has to do with story. A video game is a game. And on that note, we are going to talk about the gameplay of God of War. Because this is where the main problem comes in with this game. Okay, so what did you think of the gameplay of this God of War? I didn't like it. I thought it was complete crap. It was, and I'm so used to the other God of War games that I guess I'm just so used to what those had that this one, it was extremely slow. It wasn't anything I was used to. And it was funny because you saw me have this problem. Have You saw me have this problem is that when I was playing it, I was still trying to play it like the old God of War games. I was still trying to use the old buttons and everything else. I, and it was just something that, you know... I play a God of War game, I'm going to use the old buttons. But of course, new game, new world, new rules, whatever. And it was extremely hard for me to play. Now, I also don't care for the gameplay. And it's for many reasons. But first, let me just state real quick. I'm not saying that a game cannot change its formula here and there. It can. I mean, I like Resident Evil 4 more than the other Resident Evils. Not because it has a better story, just because the gameplay is... Is better. I think the original games have much better story, much better atmosphere. Resident Evil 4 had a much more fun gameplay style for me. So I'm not saying it's wrong to change the game game up, but um, this game didn't, didn't do it in the right way for me. The gameplay has been changed so badly. Well, before you used to have a complete view of the area to know where the enemies were at and how you could attack them. In this game, they have the camera so zoomed in behind you, the FOV is garbage here. You can't see nothing in this game. It's such a tight little squeeze of a camera view. It, it's it's hard to focus on anything other than the one enemy in front of you. And then it's just... The, the camera angle is really what really drags this game down. You could have kept the same kind of combat in this game. But zoom out the camera, it would have been so much more comfortable to use. The yeah. camera's too zoomed in. This game is only really zoomed in because the PS4's limiting hardware won't allow for that much of the game to be viewed at one time there. This game is really is really trying to push graphical quality, and the PS4 is not a console that can handle graphical quality, which is why the screen is so zoomed in. If they were to zoom it out, the game would chug and become an even more unplayable frame rate than what it's at now. So which is why they had to do that, because they're so obsessed with making games look a certain way. And I don't care about that. The, the game needs to be functional and fast and fun before you make it look pretty. But obviously, Santa Monica doesn't give a shit about that no more. They only care about making it look pretty and let the gameplay suffer for it. Now, Which for, is pretty sad. And for me, it's not fun because the gameplay is so slow. And you start off with the Leviathan Axe. It's not a bad idea in concept, but I don't like it being the starting weapon. Later on in the game, you do get the Blades of Chaos. Ain't surprising, that's when the game gets a little bit more playable. Why? Because the Blades of Chaos is a much more dynamic, fun weapon to use. The Leviathan Axe, you have one strategy. Throw it, bring it back to yourself. Throw it, bring it back to yourself. That's all you have to do with an axe. Because the actual combat with the axe is slow, it's boring. It's not really a fun way to fight enemies. Now, whether you like it or not, that's a difference of opinion. You don't have you don't have to think it's boring. I thought it was such a limiting weapon. You had no range on that weapon other than throwing it and bringing it back. 
And most enemies can be killed that way. So, sure, some of the harder ones, you have to be a little bit more craftier with the way you fight. But most of the time, even some of the big bosses, I was still just throwing the axe and bringing it back and it would work. And someone tried to tell me that playing on hard mode, you can't do that. Um, I tried it on hard mode and I was still killing monsters that same way. And sure, I had to be a little bit more careful because they're faster, but it's still very much doable to do that. Now, against, not against all. Like, if you try to get with the Valkyries, you might get your ass killed. So I would not recommend it with them. But with most common enemies, you can do that. So it's not really a thing. Now, they have a level up system like every other game like Shadow of Mordor has and shit like that. And it's not, it doesn't fit here. Why does every game feel the need to add the same stupid dumbed down RPG mechanic in every game now? God of War is not an RPG. It does not need RPG mechanics mm -mm. in there. Now before in the old games, you would just pour some souls into your weapon and it would give you new combos and yeah, upgrade your attacks or whatever. And you, and that's fine. That works perfect. Do it like this where I have to, here, put a new piece on your axe. Here, put this shoulder pad on. Put this, the, you know, it's like, it's, oh, it feels so, awkward. It doesn't belong in a God of War game. And this mechanic is being pushed into every major AAA game out there. It's so annoying. Why does every game need this? This is not Shadow of Mordor here. This is this is God of War. It does not need it. And for me, it doesn't work. So that other people may disagree. They may like it. it. Does not work for me. Now, well, now I have had people telling me that this combat has more depth than the original combat. It was saying that the original one, all you do is put a square, square, triangle. Well, in this game, you're doing the same thing, but you're doing it on the the trigger buttons. It's no different. Yeah. And then they say, you have so many combos you can learn. Those combos are pretty much the exact same combos you learned from the other games. When you just upgrade, when you just upgrade your weapons with the souls. It's the exact same thing. Yeah. It does, it does, the gameplay hasn't really changed other than it's slower and the camera is moved into a, a terrible spot and you really yep. can't control yourself and the game is so, so, what, what, what's the word? The game is so stiff. It doesn't feel fluid. It's extremely limited. So for me, for you to tell me that the combat is better, no, it's almost exactly the same, except these few changes make it almost unplayable. So yeah. don't act like this new combo system. Oh, you can do this combo, this combo. I could do all those in the old game as well. It doesn't change anything. Yep. Now, that, that's the major problem with it. But another problem is these enemies have no depth in the way they act. <laughs> you have two enemies, either they're red or they're blue. If they're red, you use the axe on them. If they're blue, you use the Blades of Chaos. And that's pretty much all the strategy you have to do in the game. Just dodge and hit them when they change colors. That's it. In the old game, when I was playing, recently playing again, there's a part when you're fighting like Gorgons and you're fighting um, yeah, Minotaurs. You're, fight, you're fighting the Minotaurs and the, and, and the Gorgons. Now... The, Gor the, the, the Gorgons are moving fast. They can slap you, and you're trying to hit them. But while you're doing that, the Minotaurs are trying to are trying to slam on you. But you can use enemies against each other because the Gorgons try to freeze you. You can dodge around them and try to have them freeze the Minotaurs. Then you can destroy their asses, and then you can kill the, the, the Gorgons. Or you can kill the Gorgon real fast, and when you pop off her head, she'll freeze everything around you. Yeah. And you can kill them real quick. You can't do that in this game. This game has nothing like that. And even when when I was fighting uh, a Cyclops, I'm fighting a Cyclops, there's civilians running around all over the place. He's killing them. I'm trying to kill the, the Cyclops. The Cyclops is fast. He doesn't really take uh, actual damage. He takes damage, but he doesn't really feel it. He still keeps attacking you. And you have to keep constantly dodging, moving fast. There's a part when I was fighting two Cyclopses and a, a couple of Gorgons, I could not even stand still for a second. I would have to hit once, twice, and roll away. Hit once, twice, roll away. I had to do that constantly until everything was dead. You never have any fast combat like this in this game. Because most of the enemies, they'll sit there and wait for you to finish your attack. Yeah. And the ones that don't, they'll go behind you. But it's never hard to, to stop that because you know when they're about to attack you because it gives you that little arrow becomes red or Atreus just yells out, watch out, father, and you just roll away. And the combat never feels hectic as it did in the old game. The only thing that makes it feel hectic is there's one enemy that's like a witch, and you have to have Atreus shoot her first with an arrow before you can hit her. Yeah. Other than that, the combat is so dull. There's n All the enemies feel the same. You fight them all the same. There's no real strategy in fighting any of them. 
And when you do fight them, there's no payoff. Because in the old games, there were so many ways you can kill these creatures. You can't do that here. Nope. You kill them all the same way. And you kill them, they just poof into cheese leaves or whatever. They just, poof, they're gone. It's so boring. In the old game, you could, like, grab them. You could, like, slam them on the floor and stab them. Or you could pick them up and tear them in half. Or you could just punch them until they die. There were so many ways you could do against an enemy. And this one, you can't. It's just, you grab them... You put him on the floor, you kick his head off, and he's dead. You do that constantly. Because they had so many more animations towards so many different uh, enemies in the older games. And if I remember correctly, they had more than one animation, you know, for these things and how to take them out. And, I mean, and in this one, you only get what? Kick him on the, like, have him hit the ground and stomp on his face. Yeah. It's, That's it. I've seen that one animation like I want to say a hundred times or more throughout the game. It's yeah. like oh my god, and the combat's not satisfying. It's so slow, and the enemies are so predictable. And everyone says put it on hard mode. All hard mode does is make them even more damage sponges and makes them move a little bit faster. Other than that, you use the same strategies, and they die easily. It's yeah. not. It's, it doesn't make it any harder. They have that fake kind of hard where it just says well we make them to the point where you can't fight them because you're not the right level so pretty much it throws out all skill and just says just keep playing until you get to this level and then you can you can beat them i'm like well that's not really skill then i mean just make a just make a character hard with their attacks and make me get better in my skill to fight them don't make it to where i can't fight them regardless because i'm not the right level like i got to a part well, I did meet a Valkyrie, but I was not the right level. One hit, boom, Kratos is dead. And I'm just like, not only is this not cool in gameplay, it makes no sense in the lore. So I can go kill Zeus all day, yeah. but a lowly Valkyrie, that kills Kratos in one hit. I mean, it, it, doesn't make, it doesn't make any sense. Even the Valkyrie's harder than Baldur, who's supposed to be the god of, a, of the Norse mythology. And he's easier to beat than a Valkyrie? It makes like, no sense. It doesn't make any sense. So it's stupid in gameplay wise, and it's stupid in the lore of the the game. It's just like everything you do in this game is just not feel right. It's just not fun. The one part of the gameplay that I like doesn't even involve Kratos. It's Atreus. He has a thing where he can summon these like animals out of his arrows. Now they had other ones, I think like bats and hogs, but I stuck with the wolves. And whenever I got into a bind, if I was like, oh, I'm taking too many hits here, I just call out those wolves and they start attacking everyone. I'm like, Atreus, I like him in combat. Not in story, but in combat, combat yeah. Atreus is fun. I like him in the combat because um, he does that. And he's 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 re- very useful in that aspect. Yeah. So I like that. But one of the problems I saw with the game is there's no more magic in this game. Kratos can only attack physically. He has no more magic at all to use in the old games you could use medusa's head to, to freeze enemies and shit or you had like poseidon's rage and you like all these lightning and shit or the other games you know they had other types of spartan rage stuff you could use this yeah. one it doesn't have that this one spartan rage just ends up being Rawr, and he just punches and that's about it you know so he's like he's like, like he so has lame here. little like fit like the hulk and then it's just like, like before the other games spartan rage used to always be different like i know like in um in god of war 3 when you use spartan rage like like I think I think all the shields would cover him and all the arrows would come and pff, yeah. and like hit everyone, or like the Spartan rage was different in Ghost of Sparta. It was always changing. This one he just punches, and he could throw rocks. And you know it's kind of it's kind of boring and dull. The combat is really the worst part of this game, from the camera angle, from just the way you fight, from the weapons. Why was the Leviathan axe the primary weapon? He should have got that later on in the game. Yeah. And he should have started off with the Blades of Chaos. If it did that, I would have had no problem with it. Because the Blades of Chaos, well, I would have had problems, but it wouldn't have been as noticeable in the beginning. Because the game got so much more fun when you got the Blades of Chaos. It became, hey, this kind of feels like a God of War game now. you know. And once you get that, that's when you start switching the enemies. That's when they start making some red, some blue. So that added some of the strategy to it. But that's at the halfway point of the game. So the first half of the game, there's no strategy at all, and you're just killing every monster with the Leviathan Axe in the most boring way, and it's so dull. The first half of the game is complete, utter shit. The second half of the game, you meet Mimir, he 
he keeps the game alive because his humor and he fills you in on the lore. He he gives you a different pace with all the boring other characters. He makes it enjoyable. And then you get the Blades of Chaos and the combat becomes somewhat more enjoyable. And then the enemies become more diverse because of the red and blue thingy. And it, second half is so much more better than the first half. Even though that's not saying much because the second half is not even better than Ascension gameplay. But it, it, it's better than the first half of the game. And it was just like, why would you go this route for the game? You didn't fix it. And for anyone saying, well, maybe they got tired of doing that way. You know, you could have made it better. Because God of War was technically never on Devil May Cry's level. Devil May Cry was a much more skill-based game. To pull off those those uh, those uh, combos, you had to be very good at what you were doing in Devil May Cry. God of War was kind of the easy man, Devil May Cry. Yeah. They could have finally finally brought the level up to Devil May Cry and enhanced God of War that way. But they chose to dumb it down, make it slower, make it easier to you know to play the game. That's like that's not what What happened to challenge? Where's the challenge in this game anymore? The way I see it, a lot of people don't like challenges anymore. They like to have their hand held and be guided the whole way through, which I can't stand. I don't know how a lot of people like this kind of gameplay style or like to have everything, you know, just thrown out there for them. I mean, I guess because we're, you know, older gamers, I guess, you know, we're used to a different type of one where you just get thrown into a world and you figure it out for yourself. Not this game. (laughs) Nah, a lot of modern games, that's the thing, a lot of modern games tend to do that. They always like kind of take you by the hand. You're always being led everywhere and everything else. And this is how that game felt. I think that's another major reason why I dislike this game. And technically, this game feels like a poor man's Shadow of Mordor. It, it does. Because it even has the same system, how you upgrade your weapons. Like you put the different runes in your, your axe and it gets stronger, gets new abilities. Shadow of Mordor already did this. I saw this already. And it's like, you're just copying them now. And it's just like, I don't even feel like I'm playing God of War anymore. And if there's one thing God of War was known for back in the day, was epic boss fights. This game has none. None. No boss fights. There are, you fight Boulder twice. He's the same way. He's a little, he's a little bit more strategic in the second fight because of the blue-red yeah. factor. Other than that, he moves the exact same way. So he's, he's boring. It's not epic in the slightest. You yeah. fight Thor's sons, which the only thing cool about that fight is when they disappear and everything becomes foggy. Kratos and Atreus are back to back, and you have to kind of circle around waiting for one of them to attack you. Then you block them with the shield and you throw them over you. That was kind of cool, but it, w- it wasn't a game changer or anything. Yeah. And it wasn't that, wasn't that epic of a boss fight. The only boss fight that's somewhat, you could say, could be epic is when you fight this fucking dragon. And he's big, much much bigger than Kratos, but it's not. It wasn't a very fun fight, anyway. So I'm like, uh, yeah. no epic boss fights. Now you could say when you fight the Valkyries, those are a lot harder fights. Yeah, but if you're the kind of person that only plays the story and not the side missions, you never even see the Valkyries. So it doesn't matter. So it's, the fight doesn't mean shit. There are other dragons out there too, but again, they're only side missions. If you don't go towards them, you never see them. You don't fight them. So this game has. Zero epic boss fights and back in the day every boss fight used to feel big used to feel epic and the world and the bosses made you feel a little Sometimes the the camera would back out so much you'd be like Kratos is a fucking little speck and you're the world is so fucking huge You don't get that once in this game. No, not once and it's just like Ugh, and you know I I didn't realize how crappy the game feels when there's no jumping mechanics in the game Why is that why take out? That. I don't know, because now I, I can do less combos now because I can't jump. And two, now the level design is so flat because now there's no more jumping. So I, there's, there's no platforming in the game no more. And it's like, no, really? No platforming in God of War? It's like, why? There's no more puzzles in this fucking game. There are sl- little obstacles that you have to throw the axe at something to stop it. Or if you can even call these puzzles, which I don't. Uh, they're very lame. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm not saying the original God of War games were mind-busting puzzles, because they weren't. But they were scattered throughout the whole game. This one has almost none. And when they do have some, it's usually the same thing recycled again and again. Use the axe to freeze yeah. this thing and then go past it and bring the axe back. It's the exact same puzzle again and again and again. 
So you got rid of the platforming. You got rid of the puzzles. You really you got rid of a lot of the action. So what's left? I, I'm left with a walking simulator. Yeah. And it's like this is what I'm playing God of War for to walk, which is why I said in my rant, this is God of Walking. I mean, yeah, it's, half it's the time boring. That's how you're doing. You don't do anything in this game, and when you do fight, it's not fun. I mean, I mean were you having as much fun in this game as you did the old games? No. When mm-hmm. I was playing this game, I never really smiled once while playing this game because I wasn't having any fun. When I played the other God of War games, I was like constantly having a fun time but i also had serious face because the game is hard <laughs> and it makes you have to you have to change the way you yeah. fight every enemy that it comes out challenged it, you this one does not challenge you it's like here's the same drogger i fought a thousand times throw my axe bring it back throw it back bring it back this is the one fucking troll with the big block on his you know, on his shoulder you kill him the same way every single time and there's a stupid witch that disappears, but just have Atria shoot her, and you can just smack the shit out of her for a while yeah. and she dies. Nothing really here feels different. Nothing here challenges you. The combat is so limiting and it's so dumbed down that anyone can play through it. And that's what these developers design these games for. They de- they, they design them for people who aren't good at games. That's why the easy mode even says, if you want more of a story experience and no no gameplay, then play this mode. I'm like, who the fuck's gonna play that mode? I mean... Who wants to play a game where you're just playing for the story? And it's like, uh, no. why play a game? And everyone's just going to say, play the hard mode. The hard mode does not solve these problems. If anything, the hard mode showcases these problems even worse because the gameplay is so flawed. Yep. It's not hard because the game's hard. It's hard because the controls suck and the mechanics are garbage. And the camera angle is too fucking zoomed in to give you any kind of decent FOV. And... The frame rate is not good. It's pretty chuggish sometimes. And they say, well, get the PS4 Pro. That doesn't help it that much either. I've seen the, uh, the, the videos on it. It's not it's not that good. It's not up to Devil May Cry's level. In the old God of War games, they hit 60 frames per second constantly when they re-released them on the PS3. This one can't do it on the PS4 because they're too focused on graphics and not focused on making the game run well. Make it run well and then adjust your graphic quality to that. Like, I wish they made it like PC where I can tone the graphics down to get a smoother frame rate. Yeah. But they won't do that on console because they're like, who wants frame rate? You want it to look like very fucking detailed. Not, when it, not if it runs like shit. Yeah. If it runs like shit, then I don't care how it looks. <laughs> now, there's one more aspect we need to get into also about this whole thing. And that's the world. Because the world is dead. Yeah. Is dead in this game. This game pretends to be an open world game. It tries to say, Atreus always tells you, we can go exploring if you want to. It's like, explore what? Another There's empty cave? to explore. Another little corridor that leads me nowhere? It's just like, the exploring in this game is so laugh- laughably bad. It's like, you're not an open world game. Your map is, your map is really small. Yeah. And it's not open world. You can explore, what, a cave here, a little crevice here. There's not much to explore in no. this game. And, I'm, and if I'm do what I'm finding, what more toys or more money or whatever, it's just like I'm exploring nothing. And then they give you a few side quests, but the, as usual, side quests are filler, and they're not required. And it's just it's there to fill up the bland world yeah. of the game. And that's what this game, that's what these side quests do. They just fill up other crap. And they go, well, you can fight the other dragons. You can fight the Valkyries. I'm like, yeah, but I don't really care about doing that. So what's my motivation to do so? I don't care. And, and for me, I've always been a person who doesn't give a shit about side quests. I don't really do them because I don't like them. Unless they really offer me something really good. In this game, as far as I've seen, what I've checked, they don't offer you much. So <laughs> what's the point of me doing it? But another reason why I'm saying this world is dead. When you were playing, or when I was playing, did you ever go into some wild place and all of a sudden there's just a random civilian working or walking by or anything? No. There's no one in this world. The only people who inhabit this world are the characters I brought up to you earlier. That's it. There's no I mean, other... There's no towns. There's no cities. There's no people working. There's no people living their and lives. And that's what you would run into constantly in the older in the old, games. Yeah, in the first God of War game, when, when before you see Ares attacking the city, 
You see there's soldiers fighting the monsters. You see civilians running for their lives and hiding yeah. in their houses. It felt alive. Here, there is no one. Nothing. It's dead. And I'm like, this is a world I'm supposed to be interested in. There's not even animals that attack you. You don't even go to a small town or anything. I mean, yeah, not that there, I know There's nothing. You don't. There's, there's nothing. And it's just like, this game feels so dull. And it's like, what am I to explore? Anything you explore, you just find more enemies. And that's about it. There's nothing else to see. There's no random town where you can go talk to somebody and get a new quest like this. I'll help you do this and do that. There's none of that. So Atreus yeah. keeps telling me, let's go exploring. For what? There's nothing to explore. Mm. This world's dead. It's like, why should I even do it? If you're not going to commit to the bit, if you're not going to make it open world, why even make it semi-open world or pseudo-open world? Because it's so, it's the world is so boring. There is literally nothing to do in this game, which is why I stayed focused on the main campaign. Because the side quests aren't worth doing, and exploring, there's not much to explore. So, the game feels like a graveyard. There's nothing here to do, there's no one here to see, there's no one here to talk to. Even if you play a game like Skyrim, when you first leave that opening spot, you can go a certain way, you see a bunch of bandits here. You can go into a cave, you might find more bandits, or you might see somebody else... You know, just doing their work or someone just walking by. You know, it feels like it's alive. You go to the town, you talk to people, they give you some information, they may help you, they get more side quests. There's reasons to do stuff there. Here, there is nothing like that. Nothing. And it's like, who, am I, who, who do I talk to? Brock and Sindri? All they want to do is upgrade my armor and weapons. <laughs> so, there's nothing to do. Yeah. And it's just like, this, was, this is what I'm supposed to be excited about? Market it like it's a huge world you can explore. There's nothing to explore here. I'm not having fun with this world. The world feels empty. This world is filled with what? 12 characters? And that's it. There's no there's nobody else in this world. And it's like... And you would think when you're walking around in the wild, maybe, maybe a fucking bear would attack you or a wolf or something. Know, like nothing something. attacks you. Not one thing. Fucking Bigfoot can come out and do some and shit. I don't know. There's one scene that got my hopes up. And it's in the beginning of the game. You get attacked by these random people. They're like cannibals. And Kratos tells you, stand back, boy, I'll deal with them. And you kill them, but then you never see anyone like that ever again. So it's like, okay, you gave me one moment where there were random people who attacked me, but never again. And it's like, well, that's pretty lame. Even the other worlds, the other realms you explore, there's not much to explore other than seeing enemies. And it's just like, this world, you have nine worlds in this game. And they're all equally dull. And they're all equally dead. And they're all equally boring. And it's just like, wow. This is what's supposed to be the next great game? Nope. I mean, if you're not going to be open world, then go back to the old style of level design and make it more linear. Because the game is already linear. Yeah. But it just tries to pretend that it's not. But it is. Just go back the way it was and give me epic set pieces like the, like the way I used to get it. There was a part in the original game when I'm climbing up a, a, a building... And I see a huge ass Ares, I see his legs walking right by me, and I'm seeing monsters fighting soldiers and shit. I'm like, this feels epic. There's so much stuff going on around me. Here, it's never like that. Here, it's just me and Atreus fighting monsters, fighting, seeing a few people here and there, like the main characters, and that's mm -hmm. it. There's no, it's a dead world. And I don't know how more I can say that. And I haven't seen any reviewer mention this. It's, the world is dead. How, how can they all... How can no one else see this? Are they refusing to see it? Probably. I mean, it's very noticeable. So, let me ask you this. Is there anything about the game that... Cause I don't want to be completely... Say everything is bad, 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 bad. There, ha there are some good aspects in there. What do you think are the good aspects? The good aspects? I mean, the good aspects is, of course, what you named before is actually... Again, getting the Blades of Chaos and actually making it feel like a actual god of war game um yeah as much as like we were just talking about you know the world and everything else within it i mean the world itself was nice it was something to look at because it's something new compared to the world before and you know one that i liked to of course seeing because of how i just like seeing creatures that are like huge was the the world serpent that was pretty cool but there wasn't too much other than that that i can think of and for me mimir is the best thing in this game 
That I have to agree. He's yeah. probably the best character in the game, which is sad because it should be Kratos. He, he ends up not being a good character. But Mimir is great. Um, I'm not going to say the graphics are bad. The graphics are good. Yeah. Um, they didn't impress me as much because it wasn't a huge jump from 3 to this one compared yeah. to the way 2 to 3 was. That was a huge jump in graphic quality. So it didn't impress me, but I'm not going to say, it, oh, it looks like shit. No, it looks pretty damn good. Uh, the graphics are great. Um, what else? What else is good about this game? Oh, I said Atreus, the, how he can shoot the arrows that become like the animals Atreus, and shit. Atreus, like we said, is good. That's pretty. That's pretty cool. I thought that was that that was uh, pretty damn good. Um, the world is. It looks great. Yeah. It's just a shame there's nothing to do in it. I mean, it, you know, that's the problem with another it. Another thing that caught my eye is when he enters that one part where he's going between, you know, places. And how, you know... Oh, oh, using the Bifrost. Yeah, the Bifrost. You know, that was really interesting well, to see on how they did that that's, area. That, I do like being able to go to different realms. But the problem is, for me, every realm feels dead to yeah. me. And so it's like... If they would have made it feel more lively, not, it would have been It's not cool. interesting to go, to go through. So I'm just like, eh. So that's kind of... Bad. The Bifrost is a cool concept. It's from Norse mythology. It looks great. It works great. I like the whole idea where you're on that platform... And it moves to the next gate, and then, you know, you get transported over there. That's all great. I like all that. But most of the good things in this game are kind of superficial, and they don't help the actual gameplay part of it. Yep. Now, some people may say, I've seen them say, they love the gameplay. They go, I love the combat. It's better. Well, that's an opinion. And my opinion is that that opinion's wrong. Because the combat isn't better. The combat's actually kind of the same. The only difference is that your your weapon sucks and you have a terrible camera angle and the gameplay feels slow and stiff. So you kind of took the same gameplay with the same kind of combos you can do, but you made so many different changes that it ends up hurting it than making it better. And then plus you yeah. took you took out magic, which kind of sucks. So it's like, oh, well, that's kind of lame. You know, I don't have that no more. And there are other areas you can't get to until you learn abilities and you go back. But then, said you go back and you... I can go here now. What's here? Oh, another thing Atreus can read. Okay. And what's here? Um, a chest. All right. Oh, okay. So there's no real incentive to even go back to these spots to do all this shit. So that's kind of bad. But while talking about the game before, I realized there was something they could have did to fix this game. And it would have made it much more better. And we talked about it before. The one character they added in this game that could have fixed the entire game and had a, a positive domino effect is Faye. Yeah. Kratos' wife. And I've never seen anybody bring this up. Because this is what that's the way I see it as. The, we, like I mentioned before, the whole plot of the game was to, for, the, for the secondary plot that they don't really talk about is that the gods were trying to kill Faye to stop Ragnarok. And what happened, Baldur being stupid, you kill Baldur, and he becomes the catalyst for Ragnarok starting. So, stupid story. But if they would have kept Faye alive from the very beginning, then we could have had a great interaction between father, mother, and son. Where yeah. Kratos is the more stern, angry kind of guy, while Faye is the more calm, calm, calm to mild type of character. So, yeah. so Kratos is kind of angry and phase the opposite of that and yeah. it's like the in between that and atreus is kind of still there and he's able to react to she his, could have been his, the voice of reason yeah. while he was the opposite instead of, of making that. kratos a big pussy yeah um you would have had all three of them and that right there would have made the story more interesting because now we know they want to kill faith but now kratos is like i need to protect her yeah and i don't know what kind of journey they would have been on that, I don't know. You come up with the journey yourself and figure out why they'd be going somewhere. But the whole thing is these gods are trying to kill Faye. So now it's up to Atreus and and Kratos to protect her the entire game. And make sure she does not be killed by these fucking yeah, gods. I mean, like I told you. Know? you. So that's, that's a cool thing. Like I told you, is it could have opened up possibilities for this kind of game. Because for one, like, of course, how you say, you know, Atreus is already there with, yeah. you know, Faye and Kratos. Another way they could have done it was just be, you know, Kratos and Faye. Well, they could do that too, but I'm trying to stay and, like with Atreus there. It's fine because then that makes. I mean, it, it would have been okay, like to well, to me personally, it would have been okay just to see them two and then bring Atreus later. 
that would have been fine too. that would have been you know cool i mean because then you're integrating you know characters slowly and getting yeah. them used to I know, with you right now. Um, I'm not trying to like er- erase Atreus right now. I'm trying to like, keep him included. Well, I am because <laughs> because this is a part I'm trying to get to. If you would have kept Faye in there, then you would have had three characters to somewhat control who had their own things yeah. to bring to combat, and combat would have became a little bit more interesting because Kratos could be the physical type fighter with the weapons. Atreus is the range type fighter with the arrows, and you could have made Faye the magic type fighter. So you have three different types of fighters fighting in one type of combat situation and you yeah. can have more diverse enemies to combat this and combat would have ended up being more faster and more frantic yeah. because of this. It makes it more interesting and now you can level up three characters instead of just two who kind of, you don't read, I don't know. Yeah. So that would have made it more it interesting. It would have been interesting to see all of them play now, off each other. Another aspect you could say that could have made it better in the gameplay department is that I'm not sure people would want this but it might have made it more interesting if you want to change up the formula. Is that if Faye was there, then you could have made Faye an actual secondary playable character. Almost co-op, yeah. You could have had a co-op. You could have had either split screen or had online play. And you could have had both of them being played at the same time. And yeah. that could make the game even more exciting because then you could have even more enemies and you could have more strategy with it. You yeah. can't do that with the way the game is now. And to show this connection between, you know, Faye and Kratos and Atreus, if they did it that way, or just between Faye and Kratos, you know, that would have made more of a connection. I would feel it would make more of a connection. It would have more reason to add to the story, especially, you know, if she was killed off within this game later on. Oh, it would mean more. Because, yeah, it would because mean more. You would- you would have gotten to know the character by then and yeah. it would mean more. But the reason why I'm saying Faye is more important, not just because combat, she would have fixed combat, but the story would have became much more interesting because now there's a real reason for the gods attacking you yeah. other than they wanted Faye dead, but she was already then dead already. You could say... There's a reason you know, that they're yeah. attacking. And then, you know, a lot of people could say, yeah, this story had more depth to it. Yeah, but the main key that they had and could have used to its full potential, they killed off at, you know, you don't even see, they killed yeah, her and everything else. Faye, so it kind of dropped at that point because she could have been the key to everything. I, I feel they dropped the ball at the beginning of the game by killing yeah. Faye. Faye could have solved a lot of these issues for me. She could have fixed, yeah. she could have fixed the gameplay by making it more dynamic and more interesting. Mm-hmm. You could have added co-op with this. You chose not to. And she would have made the story... Much more enjoyable because it would have been a better story than other than spreading some ashes. And it would have been a real reason for the gods to attack, which would lead to a real threat that you're trying to keep his wife alive or her, his mom alive. Trying to keep her alive from these asshole gods trying to kill her. There's a real cause and effect here. There's a real reason for it, yeah. for everything. And they all could have had their own abilities and their own things. They could have. It would have been so much more interesting. It would have been a huge drive for the story. It's like Santa Monica. You've made the character that could have made this game great, and you killed her off yeah. before you even did anything with her. Yeah. It was like, why? Why did you do that? Faye was the one bright point that I, know, I that we realized after the game was done. Like she could have solved everything. Everything. I made this game so much more enjoyable. You decided to kill her and do nothing with it. And, you know, it would have gotten to that point again where you, for anybody who hadn't played the games before and hadn't seen that aspect of him like they showed in previous games where he's, you know, a loving father and a loving husband, it would have been something to see to bring back to the table, especially for new audiences that are getting into this game. It would have been something to see and and something like to get to know one thing i forgot to mention but i did like i like that atreus didn't have any health like you didn't have to worry about him dying yeah but if they was in the game then i wouldn't have mind if they both had their own health counter because if they was going to be the magic type character she could have the cure ability to cure your people if you want to push the rpg mechanic thing so much you could have added this in there yeah where she now has magic she can put barriers she can put cures on you to heat to heal your characters she makes just adding this one more character could have made the combat more so much more dynamic than what it ends up being and it's a shame because now when i see that i'm like i want that game i don't want this game yeah bring make another version of it put Faye in there Make the combat better I mean, because she's in there. The story I is better. Could, if I could do it, I would so do it like that. That's how I would feel. I mean, to me, now looking at it, it seems so obvious. How did these developers not see that? They saw, no, we just want to spread her ashes. 
It's like, that's not Why? cool. There's no reason for it. There's not even a good story behind it. And it's that's so lame. Where, you know, they dropped the ball. Yeah, they it, it, they did good on certain points. But when it came to what really mattered, they really dropped the and ball. And then adding her in there, it would have felt like it separated itself from The Last of Us. The Last of Us was yeah. a father-son. This one's a father. Uh, Last of Us was a father girl almost like a daughter so they're not really related but they kind of feel yeah. like it this one was father and son so, if you would have added the mother with it general, that would have added a whole new dynamic and that could have made all their interactions much more enjoyable and more fleshed out yeah. but they, they chose not to go that route and just try to make the story more of a prelude to the next game and which is stupid if anything what i didn't like is that this game felt like Patchwork. It felt like The Last of Us. It felt like Shadow of Mordor mixed in with Tomb Raider. And Uncharted and all those games like that. It just so what it, it feels like. It felt really patchy. It's like if Victor Frankenstein made this whole thing, you know? To me, it feels like so many games but God of War. It yeah. feels nothing like God of it War. It doesn't feel like God of War. And even when you do get the Blades of Chaos, it starts to feel, feel like better. one. Yeah. But it's not potential. It's not at its full potential. It- you know, for me, it's like Faye being alive. You had it had the potential to be a great game. But it did. The problem is that this game has the name God of War, and nothing in it resembles God of War. It doesn't feel like no. God of War. It doesn't act like God of War. It just feels like a hollowed out shell. And to me, of God it's of War. like this should have been a new IP for Santa Monica. Say yeah. we're going in a new direction with a new mythology, with new characters. You know, I'd have been all down for that. Yeah, it would like, have been, I think it would have been and good. If you would have changed the gameplay this this way, I would have been not as harsh because I know this is not God of War. It's not supposed to be God of War. It's supposed yeah. to be different. But because you made it God of War, and the only reason why I believe they put God of War on there, because if this game would have came out and been called um, Ash Spreading Simulator, whatever, you know, <laughs> spreading. it wouldn't have got the the attention. It wouldn't have got the perfect scores. It wouldn't have got the kind of money it made. But since they put the name God of War on there, it got everyone's attention. These, these um, reviewers saying, perfect game, it's perfect not. game, perfect game. And it's sold lots of copies. But it's like, it's just because you put that name on there and you're making it attached to God of War, which is why it's getting these accolades. If you would have called it something else and it would have been a new IP, people would have said, eh, it's a good first start, but it's not, it's not amazing. Yeah, but since because it has God of War on it, they say it's amazing, and it's, and it, it's not. And it was something that you know a lot of uh, fans from the franchise were looking forward to, and you know they were expecting this game, and so was I. And I was hyped to see that they were going, you know, towards Norse mythology and everything yeah. else. And I was excited for it until I saw what they were actually bringing to the table. That's when I felt felt let down. Now, other people that did enjoy this game, I'm glad because, I mean, at least it can somebody else can enjoy it. Yeah. I mean, I'm not trying to yeah. knock it. I mean, it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. But, I mean, still, um, I'm just saying I'm glad somebody actually enjoyed it because I didn't. You know, there are some people out there. Who did like the other games, but do like this one for some reasons? Um, I'm glad you could find the enjoyment in it. Yeah. I, I couldn't find it. The ones I don't like are the ones who say that the original games were terrible and they sucked and they were never good. And the story had no depth. The combat had no depth. And this game's amazing. And then you ask them, "Did you play that one?" They're like, "No." Well, then what well, the fuck? Then what, why the fuck are do you, you know? even you opening even, up your you mouth if you don't it. even know? And you're you're saying that. And pretty much you're, you're saying that, oh, because now they made a game for your taste, the game that I supported all this time that allowed for that game to be made yeah. is garbage. And I'm like, you're a fucking idiot, you know, because that's just, that's just stupid. You didn't even play the other game. So why should I take your opinion seriously? You didn't play yeah. them. So you don't know what's missing from the game. Yeah. You're just seeing what they give you and you're like, this is great. You just think. But I- if you saw what you were missing. Then you would be like, okay, there's something wrong and with this game. that's the problem with people like that, is that they only see people who are getting upset, and they think it's just for no reason. They think you're an Xbox fanboy, they think yeah. you're a hater, and it's like, no, I love this series. Why, well, you said it was stupid. Now that the game feels more like your taste, now I'm the stupid one for liking yeah, the old Yeah, and so like, dude, it's dumb. the game wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the other ones coming beforehand. 
and you know helping to push this game into what it is now and, and i'm telling you if god of war never existed and this was the very first god of war game it would not be as popular as it is today with the yeah. other games the other games made it what it was this game doesn't yeah. offer anything new it does nothing new other than norse mythology but it's like oh well you didn't add no new gameplay mechanics yeah. it's not revolutionary in any type of way there's no. nothing epic here the story is lame. The lack of boss fights is boring. The combat sluggish. The camera angle is garbage. The FOV is limiting. Yep. The world is dead. There's nothing to explore. You have a few good aspects here and there. Nothing to make it a, a 10 out of 10 game. Nothing. Nope. Now, speaking of 10 out of 10, let's get to the verdict of this game. Now, I, I usually don't like giving number scores. I usually like just saying, I liked it. Or I didn't like it or whatever. But since this game, people are giving it a 10 out of 10. I feel I need to give it a number. I'll tell you I'll tell you right now. No game deserves a 10 out of 10 in my book. The highest I would give any game is a 9. Just because yeah. a game can be almost perfect. But no game is will, will ever be perfect. Yeah. Something can always be improved on. And I think the groundwork for this game, there's a lot to be improved on for the next game. They can make the world bigger. They can make the world alive they can improve on the camera improve on the gameplay try to smooth it out make the enemies more different and more strategic to fight there's a lot to be improved upon here this game has an okay groundwork mm -hmm. it can be improved on for the sequel the story i guarantee you will be better than this one in the sequel so that's fine th th there's a lot to improve on but for this game to say that it's perfect with all those flaws you're you're bought or you're lying because there's no way this game's perfect. So what number would you give this Honestly, game? to me, ex because I'm always extremely brutally honest with all this crap because I hate sugarcoating shit. Now, with this game here, I did not hate it like I thought I would, but nor was I impressed all that much with it. So... Like I said, I didn't think I was going to like it all that much. I liked it a little more than what I would thought. But um, all in all, I would have to say I would have to give this game about maybe 6.5, 7-ish. Okay. To be fair somewhat. But yeah, like I said, it really dropped the ball on a lot of aspects that it could have greatly improved on. And I'm hoping that maybe in the future when they do come out with the, the other games, they'll improve greatly on what needs to be. I have to score it properly for what I liked. So I said, for the graphics are nice. Um, the mythology is good. Mimir was great. The combat is playable, I guess. Not fantastic. Not very good. It's not ideal. It's, it, it's playable at least. And they take some. They take known things from other games that work, and they put in here. But other than that, there's so little good for me in this game, and there's so much not done right because of what previous ones got right and this one just kind of flopped on i would have to give this game a three because there's nothing in this game that makes me want to play it again the combat's very true not fun the world is empty and not interesting it's dead there's nothing to do there's no other thing to for me to to really accomplish other than getting kratos a little bit stronger and to fight the Valkyries, and that's about it. And that's not enough for me to be like, I gotta play it again and again and again. No. I have beaten the other God of War games lots of times. Multiple times. Again and again and again. This one, I've played it once. I kind of played it again on hard to see how it is. And I don't want to play it no more. I think I'm done with the game. I have no reason to put it back into the PS4 to play it. So if a game does not make me want to keep playing it, I cannot give you a high score. So I'm saying you are, to be fair, since there were some good stuff, I'm saying God of War for the PS4 is a 3 out of 10. It is very lackluster. Mm -hmm. It is not fun. It's got lots of flaws. Boring story with no passion put into it. And it has a few things that are okay from graphics to Atreus and combat. And that's about it. This, this game should have never received 10 out of 10s. No. No, it's not perfect. It's not better than any of the God of War games that came before it. So there's no way it can get higher scores than those games. Not from story, not from combat, not from character, nothing. So 10 out of 10s bullshit answer for me. So 3 out of 10, that feels about right for this God of War. 
And I'm and I'm sorry. There's someone out there going three out of ten. That's blasphemous. How can a game that feels dead with s- sloppy combat get a high score and a lazy, boring story that has no reason to exist other other than to be a prelude for a much better sequel? How can I give it a high score? I can't. And if I don't want to play it again, that really factors into my score. Yeah. I don't want to play it again. So it's not a fun game for me. So a, th- a 3 out of 10 feels perfect. I'm not going to say 0 because it has some okay things in there. But a 3 feels perfect for me. I don't want to play like, it no Do more. I see myself playing it again? No. That's the thing. Other games, you know, I've played over and over and over. And they don't ever, you know, they don't have these things like which this game has. And... Because they made the game enjoyable in other games. Yeah. I mean, the old God of War games were really and, enjoyable and, compared to this one. And I want to say, you know, I'm not happy giving it this game this kind of no. score. I would have loved to give this game a 9 out of 10 or something. Yeah. I would have loved to. I love God of War. But this game, it's disappointing. I don't say I hate it. And I should hate it because of what I think, everything I said. But I don't hate it because it did some okay things. Yeah. And I think there's a lot to be used as the groundwork for a better sequel. I'm I'm saying the sequel is going to be 10 times better than this game. It better be. Because they're going to learn from everything this game did wrong and improve upon it. They should anyways. Yeah. So I'm thinking the next one's going to be great. And I might even play that one just because I'm thinking it's going to be better than this one. But this one, you can, just, you can uh... really skip it. I'm telling you, the story. They want to spread some ashes on a mountain. Boom, that's the story. So you don't even have to play it to know to be yeah. caught up what happened. Mm-mm. There's not much to go on You're not missing here. anything. The, re- the real story starts the next game. That's when the real story now, starts. The other God of War games that were all Greek mythology, those to me you have to well, play. You had to to know yeah, what's going on. Yeah, to know what was going this on. This one you can skip. Skip. Not even worry about it. Sa- don't even have to go through it. Save your $60. Yeah. Buy another game. I wish someone would have made a review like this and saved me $60, but... No one did. Everyone was praising this game to high heavens and saying, 10 out of 10, 10 out of 10, perfect, perfect, perfect. And it's like, I guess I was no. just one of the ones like you just sitting here like, why is this game getting such good reviews if it's not even that good? Because they don't want to be blackballed by the developers. And, and that's what's industry. sad is that, that's the you, bad thing about it. that people like that have to sugarcoat shit just because... Somebody can't take criticism and, to their work. And then a lot of the YouTubers, the major ones, don't want to say anything bad because then they'll get lots of hate and they might lose subscribers and they don't want to do that. I'm sorry, but it's so. just stupid. If you don't come out with a good product, you don't come out with a good product. Well, you can love the game. I don't care. If you loved it, that's fine. You that's keep fine. Play it over okay. and over again. Get your money's worth. I'm glad you, I'm glad somebody glad liked somebody, it. somebody, yeah. But for me, 3 out of 10, I ain't playing it no more. If anyone tries to get personal, call me names. I'm deleting your comment. I don't care. So. Yeah, if you want to act a certain way, do it on your own time. We don't have time for that kind of thing here. And, you know, like we said, if you liked it, great. We're glad somebody likes the game. But, you know, to those who have loved the franchise throughout the years, from the very beginning up until this point, you know, you got to see where we're coming from at least, you know, just sitting back and looking at the whole picture. So, all in all, I'm finally happy to be done with this fucking game. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it no more. I don't want to look at the game no more. I don't want to play the game no more. I just want to go play the other God of Wars or go play Dante's Inferno again or go finish Bayonetta. I just want to play something else. I gotta finish Darksiders. I don't want to look at this game no more. I'm tired of it. I've been racking my brain these last few weeks trying to come up with this stupid review (laughs) for this shitty game. I'm tired of it. If you loved it, fine, great. I'm happy for you. I personally did not. I'm just trying to warn people who have my taste not to pick up this game because yeah. the game is not fun and it's not going to be what you're expecting. And if you want an open world game, don't get this game. This game is not open world. It's there's, the opposite of open. There's <laughs> nothing to do in this game other than the main yeah. story. I would say play every other God of War other than this one. Play any of the games that it's copying like The Last of Us, Shadow of Mordor, Tomb Raider, Uncharted. Go play those because they all do it better than what this game is doing. Yeah. I would say wait, save your money for the next game because the next game, I guarantee you, it's going to be better than this one. I'm glad this review is over with. I said, I've been killing myself over this fucking review. I'm so bitter about this game because of this review. If I didn't have to do this review, maybe I'd be a little more easier on it, but the review really took a lot out of me. I, I, I'm so tired of this game, yeah. and, and I don't even want to think about it no more. I'm not going to think about it no more. I'm done with it. 
I feel like the I feel like the clouds are finally lifted and the sun's coming back out. I can finally move on. If I hope you guys enjoyed. If not, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I did not like it the way some of you other ones people yeah. did like it. I, I could you, not find the enjoyment in it. I couldn't. Yeah, I mean, if you liked it, tell us why you liked it. Without being an asshole. Yeah, please don't be an asshole. We don't like assholes. Nobody likes an asshole. But if you enjoyed it, just, you know, tell us why you enjoyed it. Because I, I mean, won't hate you for it. No. I mean, what's there to hate? But I mean... Over a game. Exactly. But I mean, if you enjoyed it, tell us why you enjoyed it. What stood out to you? What did you like about it? What characters were your favorite? Because, I mean, I would like to know what other people think that actually like this game. Like, what were their thoughts on it? Yeah, without being an asshole. I can't, <laughs> I can't stress that without being an asshole. You can tell me why you like the game and be civil about it. Yeah. And, and I'm not going to say, Be a you're decent stupid. human being. I'm not going to say that. I'm going to say, okay. And I can see some of the things that people like about it. And some people even reminded me about some things that I forgot about that I did like. Like with, yeah. with Atreus about with his the animal era or whatever it is. Yeah, that was you know, cool. I like that. That was pretty badass. You know, there's some things good about it. So, again, this is the end of it. Let us know what you think. So, yeah, I'm done. You're done. I hate this guy. <laughs> <laughs> this has been giving you so much hell. And Ugh. it's funny because I've been seeing Metal Horror Gamer here just sitting at his computer, like banging his head up against the damn keyboard because he couldn't do this. Because there was so much to cover. And I've had like five scripts for this fucking review. I've had to rewrite it. And constantly. it didn't help that you kept rewriting the same fucking paragraph over and over and fucking over. But yeah. yeah. And he's glad he's done with this. I've just been getting annoyed seeing this. <laughs> so now that it's done. It's time to move on to other games. Thank move God. Move on. All right, guys. I hope you stayed around for this video. It's a long video. But I don't yeah. know how any other way to, to, to explain this game and do it short. There's yeah. no way to possibly do it. So, again, I'm sorry for the length. But I hope you stayed. I hope you enjoyed. And I hope you guys stay safe out there. Keep on playing games because that's what gamers yeah. do. Keep gaming and on, guys. Don't be assholes. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye.